Writing as a single log, again, is, is basically it's the opposite of expanding the log. So you look at your answers and you say, okay, here I have a 2 being multiplied by a log, I have a 1 half being multiplied by a log. You don't want any numbers in front of log when you're trying to make one single log. So what you're going to end up doing is taking this 2 and bringing it and making it a power above. Same thing with this 1 half. So you're going to have the natural log of A minus the natural log of B squared now plus the natural log of C raised to the 1 half power. Now, there should be no fraction exponents when writing as a single log. So what I'm pointing out here is basically this one-half power needs to be rewritten. into a radical. Fraction exponents are radicals. And so now we clearly see what we're working with. We have a subtraction sign, we have an addition sign. You have to go in order the way you read it. So we have to start with this fraction sign. So if, not this fraction sign, this minus sign. This minus sign is going to give us a fraction. The natural log of a is going to be divided by b squared. Now you only have one natural log once you combine them. You don't have two natural logs, you don't put one on the top, you don't put one on the bottom, it's exactly the way it looks. And that's going to be added to the natural log of the radical c. Now with this addition sign, addition means to multiply this and this together. So what we're really doing is we're taking the natural log, we have a b squared, and that's going to be multiplied by radical c. Again, notice how the log turns only into one log after we apply this property. Most teachers will expect the answer to look like this, a radical c all over b squared, because of how fraction multiplication works. But again, these have to be combined, they're not separate. And that's how you write this as a single log.